So Grok3 just crushed ChatGPT 4.0, Claude 3.5, and Gemini 2 Pro. Musk wasn't kidding. So we're gonna break down how you can use Grok right now, what stands it apart from the rest, and what's the future of Grok 3. Now, one of the bigger things here is to see its benchmarks in comparison with other models. In this image here, you can see that Grok 3 has a performance on the Math 52 versus uh, Gemini 2 Pro on the gray hair 36, DeepSeek V3 at uh, 39. And you might see this other model here, Grok 3 Mini, which is promising to give uh, very high quality answers at a lot lower cost and a lot faster. So checking the benchmarks, obviously it performs really well, but what people like even more is this leaderboard that is the LM Arena. So if you haven't heard about the LM Arena before, what it essentially is, is a blind taste test of these models. What happens basically on the inside is that the user gets two responses, one from Grok and one from, for example, ChatGPT, and then the user can pick, I like the answer from this model instead of from this model. And that's how the blind taste test worked. They literally were able to hit number one, you can see here on this picture, chocolate early Grok 3, 1,400 score on this arena. This beats Gemini 2.0 uh, flash thinking, which we've been talking about before, a Gemini 2 Pro as well, and ChatGPT all at the second place here with Grok taking the lead, which is really, really cool. Now, there are some more updates that I want to talk to you about what is the future of Grok. But first, I want to show why it's different and how to use it. So if you go to grok.com, you can start using it right now. If you are from the US, everything besides EU, is that correct, uh, Mike? So yes, you can use it as long as you're not in Europe or UK. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Uh, they um, give me access here. I am obviously in Thailand right now. Now, I tested it and there's three di big things uh, with Grok in comparison to other AI models. And the first thing that I found is that... Stop using Slack, WhatsApp, and email to communicate with your team. This AI tool brings everything into one tool and it has long-term memory. Let me show you. Step number one, go to Tanka AI because this is the messenger with AI long-term memory. So just click on join the beta and you're now on the inside. Step number two, set up your messages. As you can see, I already have my unread emails, but I want to integrate it with Slack as well. So I'm going to click here. Then click on connect Slack, connect and click on allow. Now all my Slack messages go here and you can see I have four unread messages. Now I can either type a message in the chat or I can even use their AI chatbot that will think of the reply for me and automatically answer based on its long-term memory. But we can take it even further in step number three, go to your assistant. This gathers all the messages from all your platforms so we can ask it what are the five last emails in my inbox and it automatically summarized all of them for me. Then if I want to go deeper into this one, for example, I'll just prompt it, show me email number four. And now we went one step deeper. So I don't have to leave Tanka. I can just use it for all my messaging. And since it has long-term memory, it's going to be smarter as I keep going. So if you're doing a tech startup, sales, professional services, or a lot more, unify your messaging with Tanka by clicking the link in the description down below. Thank you so much to Tanka for sponsoring this section of the video. Now, I tested it and there's three big things uh, with Grok in comparison to other AI models. And the first thing that I found is that they were really good at finding X posts. So one of the things I tested it on was give me the top 10 AI news today. And I was using the deep search model, uh, if you don't know, it's the searching model essentially. And I was pretty impressed by seeing its thinking uh, mode here by finding 10 results and then browsing the results, actually looking into the article. Then they found even more results browsing more. Then they actually search on X, which 
many platforms actually can't do, which uh, is one of the major benefits here. Uh, a lot of people find news on X and uh, obviously people are posting really uh, quickly on X in comparison to uh, TikTok or YouTube that takes a little bit longer time to actually produce. So they did uh, really, really well on this exact prompt here using the deep search. They found a bunch of really interesting key points and we did research beforehand on this using our method of research and they were able to find many of the articles that we actually found ourselves internally. Like, for example, <laughs> it's funny that Grok AI recognized itself as the biggest news of, uh, <laughs> of this week. Um, Obviously it does, right? <laughs> yeah, it just starts off. Grok AI, and also Elon did this thing. <laughs> Maybe he's just gonna, <laughs> he's gonna juice it up with just Elon facts uh, and stuff like that. Uh, anyways, you have Miro Marathi and, and a bunch of these things we're actually gonna talk about in uh, this um, uh, podcast here as well. And yeah, as a standalone researcher on a first prompt using deep search, it actually found really, really good um, articles that you could use for research. Here even you have the table of recent AI news and um, yeah, you could click these links, read a bunch of things and uh, yeah, that was really interesting. But the second thing that you can actually get it to do now is the think. So if you're not familiar with that, it's essentially a reasoning model and uh, what it does is it tries to give you the answer but then it stops itself and then it goes in a circle to figure out if the answer that it actually wanted to give you was correct or not. And uh, when I used this, I used it on a pretty long prompt that we uh, have tried to use inside of ChatGPT as well, but it's essentially turned this into a podcast outline where it finds relevant links and articles that we can open in new tabs, right? So we tried to make the actual um, segment here with a bunch of different suggested uh, topics that we can talk about. And here we found the big issue. The big issue being they, <laughs> they suggest things that don't exist. So here, like tech blog analysis of Grok3, they have like open a tab with technical specs or benchmark charts. And yeah, that's fine. It can uh, tell me a suggestion. But then what actually happened is I said to it, hey, I understand you want me to have all these suggestions, but can you actually find links to me that I can click and open myself? And it looked really good in the beginning. And then I started clicking on the links and we get the 404 not found. So this is one of the hallucinations within AI that essentially recreates links that it thinks actually exists online and uh, they don't. <laughs> this we've seen before as well with other AI models, they pretty much all perform pretty bad at this exact task. And uh, that was the last thing I was able to do with the think model here. Um, but with that being said, yes, it performs exactly like the other reasoning model. It's uh, actually the search. I was very, very impressed by how it did the search. Um, I was also pretty impressed with the thinking model. Like it, it performs very similarly to ChatGPT 03. And uh, now one of the things that you can do here is to do deep search and think at the same time. So if I click on deep search, it's going to only do that and only think and so forth. You also are not able to upload images or files if you are doing the thinking model. And uh, I think that is the same in uh, ChatGPT as well. And that might be just put the document first, then do a prompt, and then do the thinking model on top of it afterwards. So those were kind of the positives and negatives of it. Besides one last part, which is Grok is integrated with my favorite AI image generator, and that is Flux. Now, I tried to use Flux inside of uh, X here, and uh, as you can see, I generated an image of Elon Musk holding a gun and smoking a cigarette. So, um, yeah, it's famously not taking any copyright into consideration. If I do like Mickey Mouse holding a gun, a uh, gun and fire in the back. It's probably going to make that. And also if I have like Hillary Clinton kissing Obama or something like that, you can make photos like that, which uh, 
I don't really like that. Uh, you can take people's likeness and use images of it. Uh, but, and also copyrighted materials like this in many other image generators, they're not able to do that. That's the plus and negatives of uh, this new technology. Um, I just wanted to share that you can actually do this and also the image model is pretty good, but it was actually not so great on these examples here. But yeah, Grok3 has an amazing image generator. And I actually like Grok3's image generator more than Dolly3 from OpenAI. Now, what about the future of Grok? So there are other things that they have added. For example, they have this mode called Big Brain. So you see here that we have the Deep Siege, Think, and Big Brain. So here you can see um, reasoning, requests and big brain for complex tasks that require more computational power. Now, some people are speculating that this is the same version that uh, O3 has with the pro plan of $200 per month. And that uses obviously a higher computing. It takes more thinking and more time to actually get the answer. And this is the version that they are planning to integrate. And the big thing here is that they might give it away for 40 bucks per month. So um, that is a big difference compared to $200 per month from OpenAI. And you could literally just swap over. I think it seems it's very capable and um, save a lot of money jumping from the deep think uh, model or the ChatGPT research uh, over to Grok here. And the last thing is XAI said it's also launching a new subscription called SuperGrok that will provide the most advanced capabilities and earliest access to new features. Super Grok will reportedly cost $30 per month. So there you have it, Grok entering uh, the AI race with a bang. I'm uh, having a little bit of uh, competition here. And uh, for me, I really like to see more competition, more people entering the space, because that means better models for us that we can use in more and new ways. Yeah, and he is definitely sleeping with both eyes open now. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> hey, so if you're doing a tech startup, sales, professional services, or a lot more, unify your messaging with Tanka by clicking the link in the description down below. Thank you so much to Tanka. Clip, we actually have a full length podcast that you can check out in the link in the description down below. A lot more to cover. All right, see you there.